here we are, the spot that the Crusaders broke into Jerusalem. The Muslims mounted one last ditch attempt to destroy Godfrey's siege tower. They used grappling irons to try and snare the tower, to use the hooks to catch the wood, and then remarkably to pull the thing over. To counter this, the Crusaders had an enormous scythe made that would cut through these ropes. At one moment, there was a brief fire there up on the walls. Godfrey saw this and lowered a makeshift bridge from his tower onto the battlements. were breached and the Muslim defenders ran for their lives. The Christians at last could seize the holy city of Jerusalem. We chased the Saracens, and killing them all the way up to Solomon's temple. Before long, its walls were streaming with blood. We killed both men and women, cutting off their heads with our drawn swords. The surviving Saracens dragged the dead bodies out in front of the city gates and piled them up in mounds as high as houses. No one has ever seen or heard such slaughter of pagans. For they burnt them on pyres as high as pyramids. No one knew how many there were. Except God. Jerusalem is ours. But the fact that against all the odds, seemingly in a miracle, this crusade took Jerusalem and achieved what it had set out to do, that seemed a very clear indication that God's hand was at work and that its participants and all of Western Europe suddenly thought, this is true, God really does want a crusade to happen, God really is behind this venture. Almost three years after he left his homeland in Northern Europe, Duke Godfrey would become the new Christian ruler of Jerusalem. Humbly, he refused to be crowned king in the city where Jesus Christ had reigned. A year later, he died in the holy city. Baldwin, the treacherous lord of Edessa, rushed to fill his shoes. He didn't share his brother's theological qualms. He readily took the title King of Jerusalem. News sped back to Europe of the extraordinary success of the First Crusade. But the inspiration for 60,000 men to travel 3,000 miles, Pope Urban, died before learning that Jerusalem was back in Christian hands for the first time in 400 years. Jerusalem is less than half a mile wide. Within her walls, the Crusaders had massacred an estimated 30,000 Muslims and Jews. News of the slaughter rocked the Islamic world. The Crusades had a very deep impact on Arab society. One, they were seen as a barbarian incursion and stories of those Crusades are still told in cafes uh, and in families as if they happened yesterday. This is something quite striking. And so whenever the West has invaded that region again, uh, people say it's another crusade, which is why after the awful events of 9-11, when the American president inadvertently, one assumes, said we now have to wage a crusade to stop this, a shiver went down the collective spine of the Islamic world because they felt they knew what was coming. As the crusaders reveled in victory, 
and plotted how to consolidate their hold on the Holy Land. Slowly, steadily, the Muslims prepared to strike back. It would not be long before the wrath of Islam was unleashed on the fledgling Christian kingdom of Jerusalem. <laughs>